working of a computer. A computer works on a system called IPO, Input Processing Output Cycle. The steps involved in the working of a computer are given below. Input The computer accepts data and instructions. They are fed into the computer using an input device such as keyboard, mouse, joystick, etc. Processing The computer processes data according to the given instructions. The processing is carried out in the central processing unit, CPU of the computer. Output The computer produces useful information. It is received from the computer through an output device such as monitor, printer, speaker, etc. Storage The process of saving data and information for future use is performed with the help of different storage devices like hard disk, CD-ROM, pen drive, etc. Look at the following picture and understand how a computer works. Input 2 plus 3 Processing 2 plus 3 Output 5 Storage 5 This is the keyboard This is the processor This is the monitor And this is the hard disk Hardware All the physical components of a computer system that can be seen and touched are together called the hardware these physical components can be used for giving input, processing the input, and storing and displaying the output. The hardware which is attached externally to the computer is also called a peripheral device. Input Unit Input devices accept input from users and convert it into a language, language of zeros and ones, that a computer can understand. Let's learn about various input devices such as keyboard, mouse, scanner, barcode reader, joystick etc. that are used to input data in different formats. Keyboard A keyboard is the most important and frequently used input device. It has many keys. These keys have numbers, letters and special characters marked on them. The keys with numbers and letters marked on them are called number keys and alphabet keys, respectively. In addition, a keyboard has special keys which are used for specific functions. A standard keyboard has 104 keys. Function keys, numlock key, escape key, enter key, delete key, cursor keys. Numeric keypad, Alt key, Space bar, Control key, Shift key, Caps lock key, Tab key. Mouse. A mouse is a pointing device that helps us point to different objects on the monitor. It allows you to operate the computer by clicking menus, options and icons instead of typing the commands. It is easier and faster to use than a keyboard. However, it cannot be used to enter the data the way a keyboard can be used. A mouse is of two types, mechanical mouse and optical mouse. Infobyte Douglas Engelbart invented the computer mouse at Stanford Research Institute in 1963. This mouse had a single button and was called the XY position indicator. Joystick A joystick is commonly used for playing games. It consists of a stick that is attached to the base. The stick moves and controls the movement of the pointer on the screen. Scanner A scanner is an input device which is used for converting printed documents or photographs into digital form to view them on a computer. It converts a picture or text from paper into a digital image. This digital format is then saved on the computer. There are two types of scanners available in the market. Flatbed scanners and handheld scanners. Touch screen Touch screen is a touch sensitive display screen on mobile phones, tablets and ATMs. 
A touch screen is also a type of input device. It recognizes the presence and position of your touch within the display region. Touch screens are user friendly devices. Barcode reader Barcodes are commonly seen on various products like grocery items and clothes. The barcode for each product is a unique combination of vertical bars that represent the product information. The barcode reader is used to scan the barcode on an item indicating the information of that item such as the price. Magnetic Ink Character Reader MICR Magnetic ink character recognition is a technique that is used to scan characters printed in magnetic ink. This is done using a device called Magnetic Ink Character Reader MICR. As characters printed in magnetic ink are difficult to forge, this technique is used extensively in banks for scanning check number, branch code and MICR number. These details are printed at the bottom of the checks. This scanned information is then fed into the computer for processing. Optical Character Reader OCR An optical character reader OCR is a device that scans the printed or handwritten text character by character and converts it into a digital format. The character recognition software is used to convert this digital image into character codes that can be processed by a computer. It is widely used to convert books, manuscripts and other documents into electronic files. Optical Mark Reader OMR An optical mark reader OMR is a device which reads printed forms used for objective type exams. These exams have to be attempted on an answer sheet containing circles or boxes. The circles or boxes have to be filled with a pen or a pencil. Such answer sheets are read using an OMR. This information is then fed into the computer for compiling the result. Touchpad It is an input device that works by identifying a user's finger movement and the applied pressure. It is used in place of a mouse and the two buttons below the touchpad work like the left and right mouse buttons. System Unit The box you see placed near the monitor is called System Unit. It is also called a computer case or CPU cabinet. Components Inside System Unit there are different components present inside the system unit that work together. These components are CPU, ROM, expansion cards, power supply, motherboard and RAM. Motherboard The motherboard is actually a circuit board with which many electronic components are connected. It also contains a large number of tiny electronic and other components. The video card, sound card, hard drive etc. are all plugged into the motherboard's various slots and connectors. CPU CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. It is often called a processor or microprocessor. It is the brain of the computer that does all the calculations and runs all the programs. It manages all the operations and carries out the basic instructions which operate a computer. ROM and RAM ROM and RAM are also fitted inside the system unit about which we will study in the later part of this chapter. Expansion Cards Expansion card also known as add-on card, internal card or interface adapter is an electronic board or card added in a system unit to give the computer a new ability. An expansion card contains ports at the back of the system unit where a device can be plugged in. For example, a sound card can be installed in the computer to generate a sound. Power Supply SMPS The power supply unit 
called SMPS Switched Mode Power Supply is the component of the system unit that converts the AC power alternative current into DC power direct current. Different motherboards and computers require different voltages on the power supply. If a power supply is not providing the necessary power, the computer will not function properly. Built into the power supply is a fan that keeps the device cool. Output Unit Output devices are used to display or print information from a computer. Let's know about some of the commonly used output devices like monitor, speaker, plotter, printer, etc. Monitor A monitor is the most commonly used output device. It can display output in the form of text, numbers, symbols, pictures, etc. A picture on the monitor is made up of thousands of tiny colored dots called pixels. The higher the number of pixels, the better is the quality of output. There are two types of monitors. Cathode Ray Tube CRT Monitor such monitors are bulky and give out a lot of heat. In addition, they consume more electricity. Hence, CRT monitors are being replaced by TFT monitors. Thin Film Transistor TFT Monitor A TFT monitor is light, gives out less heat and consumes less electricity. Hence, TFT monitors are more energy efficient than CRT monitors and are more in demand nowadays. Printer A printer is a device that is used to display text and pictures as an output on a sheet of paper. The output of the printer taken on pages is known as hard copy. Printers can be classified into two broad categories. Impact Printer an impact printer has a print head that runs back and forth or in an up and down motion on the page. As the print head moves in horizontal or vertical direction, the pins on the print head strike against an ink ribbon and then onto the paper. These printers are slow, noisy and are not used for high quality printing. Some commonly used impact printers are dot matrix printer, daisy wheel printer and line printer. Non-impact printers In non-impact printers, there is no physical contact between the print head and the paper. These printers are less noisy, faster and give much better print quality than impact printers. Inkjet printer and laser printer are the two most commonly used non-impact printers. Inkjet printers are relatively less expensive and can give both colored and black and white output at a good speed. Laser printers, though expensive, are used widely as they give good quality output at a very fast speed. Plotter a plotter is a type of printer used to print high-quality graphics such as charts, diagrams and maps. Plotters are generally used in computer-aided designs, CAD, by engineers and architects. A plotter receives commands from a user, interprets them by drawing lines on paper with one or more automated pens. Drum plotters, inkjet plotters and flatbed plotters are some plotters which are widely used nowadays. Liquid Crystal Display LCD Projector An LCD projector shows the display of a computer on a large screen. It is commonly used for displaying presentations to a larger audience during meetings, conferences and workshops. Storage Unit a computer can store a huge amount of data and information in its storage unit, also called computer memory. Computer memory can be of two types, primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory Primary memory is also referred to as main memory or internal memory. 
The primary memory is very important as the data stored in it can be directly accessed by the CPU. The primary memory can be divided into two parts, RAM, random access memory and ROM, read-only memory. RAM, RAM stands for random access memory. It is a read-write memory. Information can be written into and read from RAM. It is a volatile memory. RAM can retain the information stored in it as long as the computer is on. It loses everything stored in it as soon as the computer is switched off. The amount of RAM installed in a computer besides the number and size of programs that the system can run simultaneously. Nowadays, RAMs with capacity 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB, 4 GB and 8 GB are widely used. ROM ROM stands for read-only memory. Once data has been written onto a ROM chip, it cannot be erased and can only be read. ROM is a non-volatile memory as it retains the contents even when the power is switched off. In most computers, ROM is used for storing a special piece of software known as BIOS, Basic Input and Output System. It helps in loading the operating system when the computer is switched on. Secondary Memory Secondary memory is also referred to as auxiliary memory, external memory or backup memory. It is used for bulk storage of programs, data and other information. It has much larger capacity than the primary memory. The secondary memory is non-volatile and is used for permanent storage of data. Let's know about some important secondary storage devices. Hard disk. A hard disk is the main secondary storage device fixed inside the CPU box. It stores the operating system of the computer, programs and documents. A hard disk consists of a spindle that holds one or more disks called platters. The platters are coated with a thin layer of magnetic material and data is written on them with the help of read-write head. Hard disks with capacity 500 GB, 1 TB, 2 TB and 4 TB are widely used these days. Compact Disk Compact disks are known as optical storage devices. A compact disk can store approximately 700 MB of data. A laser beam is used for storing data on the disk. Compact disks can be of two types, CDR and CDRW. CDR is called readable CD. Data stored on the CDR cannot be erased. CDRW is called rewritable CD. Data stored on the CDRW can be erased and new data can be stored in its place. DVD, Digital Video Disc A DVD is also an optical storage device and resembles a CD. Laser beam is used to store and read the data. A DVD can store much more data than a CD. A single-sided DVD can store about 4.7 GB of data. As compared to a CD, a DVD provides better graphics display and sound. Blu-ray disc Blu-ray disc is also an optical storage device that is designed as a replacement to DVD. The name Blu-ray disc is derived from the blue wallet laser beam that is used to read from and write to this type of disc. With their high storage capacity, Blu-ray discs can store higher resolution video and audio, as well as photos, data and other digital content. A Blu-ray disc can store 25 GB of data. Pen or flash drive A pen drive is a removable storage device that is small in size and can be carried easily. It is a USB device that can be used to quickly transfer audio, video and data files from the hard drive of one computer to another. Its storage capacity goes up to 512 GB. Memory Card 
a memory card is small in size and can store data in digital format. It is used in various electronic devices like mobile phones, digital cameras, MP3 players and many other portable devices. Software a collection of instructions to control the hardware and operations of a computer is termed as software. The step-by-step -step instructions that can be performed on a computer to do a particular task is called a program. A set of programs is further referred to as software. Software is broadly categorized as application software and system software. You will study about software in higher class. InfoByte the term software was first used by an American mathematician, John W. Tukey, in 1957. Classification of computer on the basis of size. Computers of different sizes are used. Functions and processing capacity of computers depends upon their sizes. On the basis of size, we can classify computers into four broad categories, microcomputers, mini computers, mainframes and supercomputers. Microcomputers Microcomputers are small in size. They are also referred to as personal computers because a single user can use it at a time. A single microprocessor is used in a microcomputer. Desktops and portable computers such as laptops, Notebooks, tablets, etc. are the examples of microcomputers. Microcomputers work on small volume of data, but they can handle a variety of applications. Smartphone is also a type of microcomputer. We use these smartphones in our daily lives. Mini computers. Mini computers are larger in size and capacity as compared to microcomputers. They are multi-users and can handle approximately 500 users at a time. These are commonly used in small organizations where data is shared between various departments. CDC 160A, DEC, PDP are examples of mini computers. Mainframes Mainframes are quite bigger in size and are very powerful computers. They can handle thousands of users at a time. Mainframe computers are very expensive. They are generally used in large organizations such as railway stations, banks and hospitals. IBM Z series, Cray XT53 and System Z9 and Z10 servers are some examples of mainframes. Supercomputers Supercomputers are the most powerful computers. However, they are huge in size and very expensive. They can process trillions of instructions per second. Supercomputers are used for specialized applications that require a lot of mathematical calculations such as weather forecasting and nuclear energy research. Cray-1, Belly, Deep Blue and Hydra are examples of supercomputers. Infobyte The supercomputer named Deep Blue was the first machine to defeat the world chess champion Garry Kasparov in 1997. Param 8000 was the first supercomputer built in India in 1990. MS Windows Windows operating system has been developed by Microsoft Corporation, a US-based software company. It was first launched in 1985 and was known as Windows 1.0. To keep pace with the latest technology, Microsoft launches different versions of Windows OS from time to time to include additional and upgraded features. Some very popular versions of Windows are Windows 98, 1998, Windows XP 2001, Windows Vista 2006, Windows 7 2009, Windows 8 2012, Windows 7. Windows 7 is a popular operating system for use on personal computers. 
The first screen that appears on the monitor after the Windows OS is loaded is called the desktop. The desktop contains a set of icons and the taskbar. Icons The small pictures on the desktop are called icons. When you double-click on an icon, a window opens or a program gets executed. Some icons may represent a file or a folder. You save your work in files in a computer. A folder is a collection of such files. Some of the common desktop icons are Computer Recycle Bin Folder File Taskbar The taskbar is the long horizontal bar at the bottom of your screen. The taskbar is divided into the following sections. Start button Middle section Show desktop button, notification area, start button. It is located at the bottom left corner of the taskbar. When you click on this button, a list of options or programs appears. This list is called the start menu. Middle section. This bar appears close to the start button. It contains icons of pinned and open programs. Notification area. It is present at the right corner of the taskbar. It displays a clock and a group of small icons that tell the status of certain programs running on your computer. Show desktop button. It is present at the end of the notification area. Clicking on this button minimizes all open windows and displays the desktop. New features of Windows 7. Windows 7 provides the user with some new features which make the Windows environment more user-friendly. Let us discuss some of them. Arrow Interface Windows 7 provides an arrow interface which has simplified the way we work with Windows. Some of the features include Arrow Peak This feature lets you quickly view the desktop without minimizing the open windows. It also provides a quick view of all the open windows in your taskbar for a thumbnail preview. To view the desktop without minimizing the open windows, point to the Show Desktop button at the end of the taskbar. For a thumbnail preview of the open windows on the taskbar, place the mouse pointer on the program icon and point to the thumbnail. The selected window comes into focus and all other open windows fade away. Arrow Snap It allows you to place windows side by side for making comparisons. For snapping the windows, drag the window to the left or right side of the screen from its title bar till the time an outline of the expanded window appears. Be quick! You can use the key combination of Windows logo key plus spacebar to preview the desktop quickly to restore the windows back, release the keys. Arrow Flip 3D Using this feature, we can preview all open windows as a stack. To switch among windows, press the Windows logo key plus tab together. Hold the Windows logo key and press the tab key to scroll through the open windows until the window you want appears, then release the Windows logo key. Arrow Shake This feature allows you to focus on one of the open windows without minimizing the other open windows one by one. For this, drag the window you want to keep open back and forth. All other open windows will be minimized. Improved Taskbar The taskbar in Windows 7 contains many new and improved options that allow you to quickly access frequently used programs. Some of these options include Pinning It allows you to place frequently used programs on the taskbar so that you can quickly open them without browsing the Start menu. In this chapter, you will learn to pin a program to the taskbar. Jump Lists Jump Lists displays files, folders or websites opened recently. Jump Lists may appear in the Start menu 
or on the task bar for the programs that you have pinned. To see the jump lists on the task bar, right click on the program icon on the task bar. Improved and faster search. Windows 7 has made searching for files and folders easier and faster. To search for files, you can type your search word either at the top of any open window or in the search box on the start menu. As soon as you start typing, the search begins automatically. Libraries A user can manage files and folders conveniently by using this feature. The libraries let you create a collection of all related files at one place though the physical location of the files do not undergo any change. Windows 7 has four default libraries, Documents, Music, Pictures and Videos. You can right-click any folder and include its contents in the library. The files will be physically located in the different folders but will show up in the library. For example, instead of clicking through a lot of folders for documents, you can include them in the documents library for quick access. When you open the documents library, all documents from the folders included in the library will be visible or accessible. Gadgets Gadgets contain many programs to be displayed on the desktop for quickly accessing information. The gadgets include clock, calendar, slideshow, feed headlines, weather update, etc. Customizing Windows Customizing Windows means changing the appearance and functionality of the computer according to your preferences. Some of the customization options include adding and removing desktop gadgets, changing desktop wallpaper, changing screensaver, pinning a program to the taskbar, adding and removing desktop gadgets. You can follow these steps to add a gadget to your desktop. Right-click on any blank area on the desktop. A shortcut menu is displayed. Choose the Gadgets option. Double-click on a gadget to add it or right-click on the gadget and choose the Add option. The gadget is displayed on the right side of the desktop. You can remove any gadget by following these steps. Right-click on the gadget. Choose the Close Gadget option or click the Close button that appears when you click the gadget. Changing the Desktop Background Background picture of a desktop is called the wallpaper. It can be replaced with a picture from your personal collection or from Windows Gallery as your wallpaper. To change the wallpaper, you can follow the given steps. Right-click on any blank area on the desktop. A shortcut menu is displayed. Choose the Personalize option. The Personalization folder is displayed. Click on the Desktop Background link. A new window with a smaller view of available pictures is displayed. Click on the picture that you want to use for your desktop background. Click on the Save Changes button. Changing the screensaver. When a computer system is on and the user does not use any of its input device for a certain period of time, a moving picture or pattern appears on the screen. This moving picture or pattern is called screensaver. To stop screensaver and return to your desktop, you can either move your mouse or press any key. You can change the screensaver by following these steps. Right-click on any blank area on the desktop. A shortcut menu is displayed. Choose the Personalize option. The Personalization folder is displayed. Click on the Screensaver link. The Screensaver Settings dialog box is displayed. Choose the Screensaver that you want to use from the Screensaver list. Click on the Preview button to check how your Screensaver will look like on the screen. Specify the minutes for which the computer should remain idle before the screensaver is displayed in the wait box. Finally, click on the OK button. 
pinning a program to the taskbar. You can follow these steps to pin a program to the taskbar. Right click on the program icon on the taskbar if the program is running. Choose the pin this program to taskbar option from the displayed menu. The program icon appears on the taskbar. Adding header and footer. With the help of header and footer option, you can insert text or graphics at the top or bottom of each page in your document. This option is very useful for inserting chapter names, logos or pictures, page numbers and date and time across all the pages. Let us learn to insert header and footer in a document. Inserting a predefined header or footer. There is a list of predefined design options for header and footer in MS Word. You can follow the given steps to insert a predefined header or footer. Click on the Insert tab. Click on the Header or Footer option in the Header and Footer group. A gallery of header or footer designs appears. Choose the header or footer design you want. The outline of the header or the footer entry box appears at the top or bottom of the page. The Design tab also appears on the ribbon. Click on the placeholders or content controls and type the desired information to be inserted as header or footer. The content controls are enclosed in square brackets. Some of the examples of content controls are type text, type the company name. After adding the header or footer, click close header and footer option on the design tab or press the escape key. The header and or footer appears in light gray color at the top and or bottom of the page. Inserting a custom header or footer. You can also create your own custom header or footer instead of choosing a predefined header or footer. The steps are click on the insert tab. Click on the header or footer option in the header and footer group. The options get displayed. Click on the edit header or edit footer option. The outline of header or footer entry box appears at the top or the bottom of the page. The design tab also appears on the ribbon. Place the insertion point at the desired position and type the information or insert the graphic and other content that you want in the header by using the options on the design tab. For example, the given screenshots show footer with date, page number and picture. After adding the header or footer, click the Close Header and Footer option on the Design tab or press the Escape key. Mail Merge Sometimes we need to send the same letter or email to a number of people. It means the content of the letter or email remains the same, but the recipient's names and their addresses vary. Mail Merge is a feature in MS Word that lets you quickly create multiple copies of letters, emails and other such documents for a number of people. Mail Merge using Mail Merge Wizard Mail Merge is a process through which we merge the main document with a data source. Let's use the Mail Merge Wizard to create letters. Click on the Mailings tab. Click on the Start Mail Merge option in the Start Mail Merge group. A drop-down list appears. Click on the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard option. The Mail Merge task pane appears on the right side of the window. Select the type of document, letters, email messages, envelopes, labels or directory that you wish to create. To send letters, click the Letters radio button. Click the Next Starting Document link at the bottom of the Mail Merge task pane. Choose the type of setup for your letters. Click the Use the Current Document radio button. The current document becomes the main document. Click the Next Select Recipients link at the bottom. Specify the location of the data source. Choose the Type a New List radio button and then click the Create link. The New Address List dialog box appears on the screen. 
Type the required details about the recipients in the text boxes. While entering, you can leave some fields blank to add details for another recipient. Click on the new entry in the dialog box. After adding information about the recipients, click on OK in the dialog box. The Save Address List dialog box appears. Type a name for the recipients list in the file name text box and click on Save. The Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appears. This dialog box displays the details of the recipients added by you. To change any detail, you can click the Edit button. After making the changes, click on OK. Now, click on the Next. Write your letter link at the bottom of the task pane. Type the content of your letter in the current document. Add the merge fields in the current document. Place the cursor at the point where you want to insert the recipient's name and address information. Click on the Address Block link in the task pane. The Insert Address Block dialog box appears. After selecting the desired check boxes, click on OK. The Address Block merge field gets added to the main document. Now, place the cursor at the point where you want to insert salutations for the recipients. Click the Greeting Line link in the pane. The Insert Greeting Line dialog box appears. Select the appropriate greeting line format and then click on OK. Now, click the Next Preview Your Letter link at the bottom of the task pane. You can preview the letters after the data source has been merged with the main document. To preview the letters one by one, click on arrow buttons. Finally, to complete the merging process, click the Next Complete the Merge link. You can choose to either print or edit individual letters. When you select either of the options, a dialog box appears asking you to specify the records. If you select the print option, the given dialog box will appear. Choose the appropriate option and click on OK. Adding transitions. Transitions are the effects that are used to enhance the changeover of slides. These effects are visible when the presentation moves from one slide to the other. You can apply transition effects either on a single slide or on all the slides. Transition effects keep the audience attentive and make the presentations interesting. To add transition effects to your presentation, follow the steps given below. Open any presentation in Normal View and click on the Transition tab. In the Transition to this slide group, you will find various transition buttons. Click on the transition effect that you want to apply. Once you select any transition effect, the Effect Options button gets activated. You can change the properties of the selected transition effect such as color or direction of transition. Be quick! Transition effects can also be added by right-clicking on the slide in the Slide Sorter view. Click on the sound from the timing group of buttons of the Transition tab. A list of sounds would get displayed. That sound will play during the transition from one slide to the other slide. Click on the sound you want to apply. You can also specify the length of the transition by setting the time in the duration option in the timing group of buttons. Proper timings for the slide transition should be set so that the audience has enough time to read the contents of the slide. Click on the option Apply to All to apply the same transition effect to all the slides in the presentation. If you do not click on this option, the transition will be applied to the current slide only. PowerPoint allows you to advance the slides either on a mouse click or after a specified time. Click on the appropriate checkbox in the Advanced Slide section. Applying Animation Effects Animation effects can be added to objects such as text, pictures, charts, etc. to enhance visual appeal of the presentation. 
It is extremely useful when we want to emphasize a particular point and control the flow of information. The order and timing of the animation can be set as per our need. We can also set the automatic setting of animation so that the slides progress without clicking the mouse. To apply animation effects, follow the steps given below. Open the presentation and select the object to which you want to apply the animation. Choose Animations tab from the menu bar. You will see that it is divided into four sections. Preview, Animation, Advanced Animation and Timing. Click on Add Animation button in the Advanced Animation group of buttons. The Add Animation pane appears on the right side of the window and is divided into four sections. Entrance The green stars in this section of the animation pane are to add animation to the object which will be seen when the object will enter the slideshow. Emphasis The yellow stars in this section are to add animations that emphasize a point or focus on a particular object. Exit in this section, the animation effects are shown in red stars and are applicable to the object while it is made to exit from the slide. Motion Paths The lowermost section of the animation pane has some add-on effects for each of the three subsections mentioned above. Also, if you want the object to move in a specified pattern during the presentation, then you can click on the Motion Path option and select the desired effect. You will notice the preview on the main working slide the moment you choose any of the animation options. In the Advanced Animation group of buttons, click on Animation Pane button. The animation pane appears on the right-hand side of the screen, which shows the names of the objects to which you have applied animation effects in a sequence. You can reorder the objects by selecting the object and using the up arrow and the down arrow buttons given at the bottom of the animation pane. The green Yellow and red stars before the object name indicate the type of the animation, entrance, emphasis and exit effect chosen for that particular object. Set the duration of the applied animation by using the seconds button. To preview the animation for the current slide, click the play button. To remove an animation effect, right-click the object from which you want to remove animation and select the Remove option. Click on the Start List box in the Timing group of buttons. Choose how you want to start playing the animation on mouse click at the same time as the previous animation or after the previous animation finishes. The duration and delay options are used to set the duration and pause respectively in seconds for any applied animation. Click on Preview on the left of the Animation toolbar to view the animation effects applied to the current slide. Info by To copy the animation applied to one object onto the other object, click the Animation Painter button. To set a special condition for starting a presentation, click the trigger button on the Animations tab. You can either set a condition for starting the animation such as after a click which acts as a trigger or set a bookmark for the same. This also acts as a trigger to decide the starting slide. Running the slide show. After making the presentation and adding the required transition and animation effects, you can run the slideshow by clicking on Slideshow tab. In the Slideshow toolbar, the Start Slideshow group has four buttons. From Beginning, it starts the slideshow from the first slide. From Current Slide, it starts the slideshow from the current slide. Broadcast Slideshow this is the new feature added to PowerPoint 2010. It sends out the slideshow to the intended viewers who can watch it in the web browser. Custom Slideshow 
It allows you to select which slides you want to include in the slide show. Using this option, you can have varied slide shows from a single presentation. For example, you can increase or decrease the length of the same presentation as per the age group of the audience. Be quick! To run the presentation from the beginning, press F5. To begin the presentation from the current slide, press Ctrl plus F5. To duplicate a slide, press Ctrl plus D. InfoByte You can hide a slide while running a presentation by using the Hide Slide button in the Setup group of buttons on the Slide Show toolbar. Rehearse Timings the feature of rehearse timings allows you to set the time duration of slide in the presentation and thus set the time duration of the whole presentation. Click on Rehearse Timings button in the Setup group of buttons. The rehearsal timer will appear as the slide show starts. When you end the presentation, it displays a message showing the total time you took practicing the presentation. The message box also asks if you want to keep the slide timings when you view the slide show. Click on the Yes button and your recorded timings will be saved. PowerPoint will use this recorded time to create automatic transition for each slide. Recording a slide show. Using this feature you can record the narration to be played when the slide show is running. Click Record Slideshow button to choose from where to start the recording, from the beginning or from the current slide. It also has the option to clear the recorded timings and narrations. For recording narrations, it is necessary to connect a microphone to your computer. Setting the Screen Resolution You can also choose the screen resolution for the full screen slideshow. Low resolution screen appears quickly. However, it lacks in displaying visual details. Larger resolutions can show more visual details. Mostly the projectors support a maximum resolution of 1024 and 768. Click on resolution in the monitors group of buttons to set the screen resolution. Printing a presentation. MS PowerPoint allows you to print in color, grayscale, or in pure black and white. You also have the option to print the entire presentation, specific slides, handouts, notes pages, and outline pages. Follow the steps given below to print a presentation. Click Print option from the File menu. The Print dialog box appears with a preview of the current slide. Choose the number of copies that you want to print. In the Settings section, specify the slides to be printed. All slides, selected slides or current slides. You can also specify the slide numbers or slide ranges to be printed. In the same section, choose whether you want to print the complete slide on a single page or notes pages or outline view. If you want handouts, then specify the number of slides to be printed per page. You can also set the print order as horizontal or vertical. Specify whether you want to print in grayscale, pure black and white or color. Click on print button on the top left corner of the print dialog box. Selecting cells. To make changes in the cell contents, we first need to select the desired cell or cells. When we select a cell or a range of cells, the selected portion is shaded with a thick black border. Follow the steps given below to make the selection. To select a single cell, click once on that cell. The currently selected cell is known as the active cell. To select the entire row or column, Click on the corresponding row heading or column heading. To select some adjacent cells together or a rectangular block of cells that touch each other along a line, click the first cell and drag the cursor. 
a bold plus symbol appears to the last cell to be selected keeping the left mouse button pressed. Release the button to complete the selection. Alternatively, you can select the first row or column using the arrow keys and hold down the shift key while you select the last row or column. Release the shift key when the desired range has been selected. To select non-adjacent cells, keep the control button pressed while clicking on the cells. To select multiple range of cells, you can use control key. To select the entire worksheet, click on the select all button at the meeting point of the row and column headers. Extend mode can be used to select a range of cells. To select a large range of cells, click a cell at the top left corner of the range and press F8. The status bar shows that the extend selection mode is on. Click the diagonally opposite cell, that is the last cell of the desired range. The range of cells will be selected. F8 or escape key is to be pressed to turn off this mode. For example, if you want to select the range B2 G13, click cell B3 and press F8. As shown in the following picture, the status bar shows extend selection. Click cell G13. You will see that the entire range of cells from B2 to G13 is selected. Using Go to command to select a range of cells. Click the cell at a corner of the range, say A3. On the Home tab under the Editing group, click the Find and Select button and then click Go to. In the dialog box that appears, type the cell address of the opposite corner of the range G13 as shown in figure in the reference text box. Then press Shift key while clicking the OK button. To cancel the selection of cells, click on any unselected cell in the worksheet. Be quick! You can select an entire row by pressing Shift plus space bar. You can select an entire column by pressing Ctrl plus space bar. You can select the entire worksheet by pressing Ctrl plus F4. Editing Cell Contents After selecting the cell, you can edit its contents. You must have seen that when you select a cell, the cell content also gets displayed in the formula bar. So, we can edit the cell contents by either of the two methods given below. Overwriting, Partial Modification Let us discuss these methods in detail. Overwriting Overwriting means changing the content completely by typing the new content. To do so, select the cell by either clicking on it or using the arrow keys on the keyboard and type in the new content. Thereafter, press the Enter key on the keyboard or click the Enter button in the formula bar. In the example given here, the content of cell B3 is changed from Hina to Sanjay. Partial Modification Partial modification means changing only a part of the content. To do this, Click the formula bar or double click on the cell in which you have to make modification. Enter the content either in the formula bar if you have clicked the formula bar or in the cell if you have double clicked on the cell. Then press the enter key or click the enter button on the formula bar. In the example given here, the content of cell C2 is changed from 56 to 560. Be quick. Press F2 for partial modification of cells. On pressing F2, the insertion point appears at the end of the cell entry. Edit commands. Undo and redo commands are also frequently used as edit commands. You can find these commands in the quick access toolbar. Undo command can be used to reverse the previous action performed. If this command is selected, it specifies the action that it will undo. We cannot do certain actions such as insert sheet and delete sheet. 
redo command can be used to redo an action that was mistakenly undone. This command is activated only after a data entry has been undone. Redo action can be performed only after the undo command is used. Be quick. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo an action. Press Ctrl plus Y to redo an action. Modifying cell contents. The contents in the cell can be deleted, inserted or modified as per the requirement. Deleting cell contents. To delete the cell contents, follow the steps given below. Select the desired cell or cells. Right click on the selected cells and click clear contents from the shortcut menu. Data of the selected cells will be deleted. Be quick. Select the cells and press the delete key on the keyboard. Copying and moving data. You can copy and move data from one part of the worksheet to another in different ways. Copying cell contents. To copy the cell contents, follow the steps given below. Select the range of data you need to copy. Click on the Home tab and click Copy in the clipboard group of buttons. A moving dotted line will surround the selected group of cells. You can also right click and select Copy from the shortcut menu. Click on the cell that will be starting point of the data when it is pasted. That is, on the upper left cell of the range where you want to copy the data. Click on Paste button from Clipboard group of buttons. You can also right click and select Paste from the shortcut menu. Press the Escape key to remove the moving border. Be quick. Select the range of cells and press Ctrl plus C for copy, Ctrl plus X to cut and Ctrl plus V to paste. Live Preview Live Preview is a new feature available in MS Excel 2010 that lets you view how the content will look with different options before you actually paste it. To use this feature, follow the steps given below. Select the cells that you want to copy. Click Copy from Clipboard group of buttons in the Home tab. Select the first cell from where you want to paste the data. Click the arrow below the Paste button. The different paste options appear as shown in the given figure. As you move the mouse pointer over each option, you will get a preview of what the pasted data will look like. Click on the Desired option. Moving Cell Contents With the help of Cut and Paste option, we can move the cell contents. Let's learn the required steps. Select the range of data you want to move. Click on the Home tab. Then click Cut in the Clipboard group of buttons. A moving dotted line surrounds the selected group of cells. And you can also right click and select Cut from the shortcut menu. Click on the cell that will be the starting point of the data when it is pasted. That is, on the upper left cells of the range where you want to move the data. Click on the Paste button. You can also right click and select Paste from the shortcut menu. To remove the moving boundary after you finish moving, press the Escape key. Be quick. Position the cursor on the boundary of the selected range of cells that you want to move. When the cursor changes to a cross shape, drag the data to the desired location while holding the left mouse button. You will see that the data is moved when you release the left mouse button. This is called the drag drop method. Inserting cells, rows and columns. Sometimes we need to insert new cells in the worksheet. To insert cells in an already existing worksheet, follow the steps given below. Select the range of cells where you want to insert new cells. Click on the Home tab and the Cells group of buttons. Click on Arrow below the Insert button. Click on Insert Cells. The Insert dialog box is displayed as shown in the figure. 
it has four options. Shift cells right. The existing cells are shifted to the right of the worksheet and blank cells are filled in the selected range. Shift cells down. The existing cells are shifted towards the bottom of the worksheet and blank cells are filled in the selected range. Entire row. New rows inserted above the selected range of rows. Entire column. New column is inserted to the left of the selected range of columns. Select the appropriate button and click OK. Inserting entire row or column. Sometimes we need to insert an entire row or a column. To insert an entire row or column in a worksheet, follow the steps given below. Select any cell in the row above which you want to insert the new row. If you want to insert a new column, then select any cell to the right of the new column. Click on Insert Sheet Rows or Insert Sheet Columns as required. The selected row is shifted down or the selected column is shifted to the right. Deleting Cells, Rows and Columns To delete blocks of cells, rows and columns in a worksheet, follow the steps given below. Select the range of cells you want to delete. Click on the Home tab. In the Cells group of buttons, click the drop-down arrow below the Delete button. Click Delete Cells. The Delete dialog box appears which has four options. Shift Cells Left The selected cells are deleted and the cells on the right of the deleted cells shift towards the left. Shift Cells Up the selected cells are deleted and the cells below the deleted cells shift up. Entire row. Complete row through the selected cells is deleted. Entire column. Complete column through the selected cells is deleted. Select the desired option and click OK. Deleting entire row or entire column. To delete an entire row or an entire column, Follow the steps given below. Select the rows or columns you want to delete. Click on the Home tab. In the Cells group of buttons, click on the arrow below Delete button. From the drop-down menu, select Delete Sheet Rows or Delete Sheet Columns. The selected rows or columns will be deleted. Be quick! Right-click on the selected cells and choose Insert or Delete from the shortcut menu to get the Insert dialog box or Delete dialog box displayed. Changing Row Height and Column Width You can change the column width and row height as per your requirement. But if you want to change the row height of a single row, click on the bottom border of the row heading and drag it up or down. To change the row height for multiple rows, follow the given steps. Select the rows. Click on the Home tab. In the Cells group of buttons, click on the Format button. From the Format drop-down list, choose the Row Height option. The Row Height dialog box is displayed. Enter the Row Height and then click OK. You will see that the row height of the selected rows has changed. Changing Column Width To change the column width of a single column, click on the right-hand border of the column heading and drag it to the required width. To change the width of several columns at once, follow these steps. Select the columns for which you want to change the width. Click on the Home tab. From Cells group of buttons, click on Format. From the drop-down list, click on Column Width. The Column Width dialog box appears. Enter the new column width and click OK. You will see that the width of the selected columns has changed. Be quick! From the Format drop-down list, you can click Auto Fit Row Height or auto fit column height to automatically adjust the row and column height respectively. InfoByte In MS Excel, the default row height is 15 
and the default column width is 8.43 characters. Using Autofill There are certain predefined lists in MS Excel that you can fill automatically up to the desired number of cells using Autofill option. To use the Autofill feature to generate a predefined series of weekdays, follow the steps given below. Type Monday in cell B2. Position the pointer at the lower right corner of the cell. The mouse pointer changes to a black cross which is known as the fill handle. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the fill handle up to cell B8. Release the button. You will see that the days Tuesday to Sunday appear automatically in the cells. Apart from filling the names of days, you can also fill consecutive numbers as well as multiples of a number using autofill option. Type two consecutive numbers to fill the series while using the autofill feature. This means if you enter 2 and 4, then the autofill feature will fill all even numbers in the selected range. If you enter 5 and 10, the autofill feature will fill multiples of 5. And if you enter 1 and 2, the autofill feature will enter consecutive numbers. The autofill feature uses the difference between the first two numbers and keeps adding it to the last number, thereby filling the range of cells automatically. Similar to the examples above, you can also generate a predefined series of dates or names of months. Custom Lists You can also create your own list of items that you need to enter frequently in your worksheet. This facility is given in Custom Lists. Adding Custom Lists Using the Custom Lists feature of MS Excel, you can add your own lists and then use these to fill a range of cells. To add a custom list, follow the steps given below. Click the File tab and then click Options. The Excel Options dialog box appears. Click the Advanced tab. The Advanced Options appears in the right pane. Click the Edit Custom Lists button in the General section. The custom list dialog box appears. Click inside the list entries list box and then type each entry in the desired order, pressing enter after each list item. Click the add button. In the custom list box, the new list appears in the same order as you enter in the list entries box. Be quick. You can also add a custom list by clicking on Import in the Custom Lists dialog box. Deleting a custom list To delete a custom list, follow the steps given below. Open the Custom List dialog box. Repeat steps 1 to 3 given in Adding Custom Lists section. From the Custom Lists given, select the list that you want to delete and click the delete button. Aligning text In Excel, alignment means the position of data with respect to the boundary of the cell. By default, numbers and date and time are always horizontally right aligned. Placed to the right, whereas text is horizontally left aligned, placed to the left in a cell. As far as the vertical alignment is concerned, by default, each data type comes at the bottom of the cell. There are six types of alignment available in the alignment group of buttons in the Home tab as shown below. Let's know about these alignments. Vertical alignment For vertical alignment of data in the cells, there are three buttons. Top align aligns the text to the top of the cell. Middle align aligns the text to the center of the cell. Bottom align aligns the text to the bottom of the cell. Horizontal alignment The buttons for horizontal alignment of data in the cells are given below. Align text left aligns the text to the left of the cell. Center aligns the text to the center of the cell. Align text right 
aligns the text to the right of the cell. Indentation. There are two buttons to indent text in the cells. Decrease indent decreases the margin between border and text in the cell. Increase indent increases the margin between border and text in the cell. Select the data you want to align and then click the required button in the alignment group of buttons described above. The alignment will be applied to the selected data. Orientation of text Orientation of text means rotating the text in a desired angle. The default orientation of text is horizontal. If you want the text to be oriented in a different manner, then select the cell or range of cells and then follow the steps given below. Click on the Home tab. Click the arrow next to the Orientation button in the Alignment group of buttons. The Orientation drop-down menu gives various options to change the orientation of the text. Look at the following orientation options. InfoByte. Click the currently selected text orientation again to reset the text back to the normal orientation. Merging and wrapping text. You know that the width of a column is limited. When you write a text longer than this width, the text extends to the adjacent cell. If the adjacent cell contains data, the extended part of the text is not visible. To overcome this, MS Excel provides the following two features in the alignment group of buttons. Wrap text. This feature allows you to fit all the content visible within the same cell. It is done by displaying the long text in multiple lines. Select the cell and click Wrap Text feature in the alignment group of buttons. You will see that the long data that was extending to the adjacent cells will be displayed in multiple lines of the same cell. Merge and Center We can use this feature to merge two or more cells so that the text fits into it. The text is then placed in the center of the merged cells. Select the entire range of cells where the text extends and then click Merge and Center. This feature is used to create labels that span multiple columns. Text Formatting Font refers to the type, size and color of the text. Some examples of font styles are Arial, Calibri, Vardana, Cambria and Times New Roman. The font group of buttons is available in the Home tab. Changing font type, size and color. You can follow the given steps to change the font type, size and color. Select the cell for which you want to format the font. Click Home tab and in the font group of buttons, click the arrow next to font type. The drop-down list appears. The names of the fonts are written in different styles. Click the font that you want to apply. The font type in the selected cell changes. Click the arrow next to font size. Different font sizes appear in the list box. Click the desired font size. The font size of the selected cell changes or click increase font size or decrease font size buttons in the font group of buttons to increase or decrease the font size of the selected cell or range of cells. Be quick. Shortcut key to increase the font size is Ctrl plus right arrow and to decrease the font size is Ctrl plus left arrow. InfoByte you can directly type the font type and size in the respective text boxes. Click the arrow next to font color now. A grid of colors appears. To get more range of colors, you can click on more colors. You will get a wider range of colors to choose from. Click on the desired color and the text color in the selected cell will change. Emphasizing the cell contents. Sometimes we need to highlight certain cell contents. This can be done by making the row and column titles bold.
The subheadings of the worksheet can then be set in italic or can be underlined. Follow the steps given below to emphasize the cell content. Select the data you want to emphasize. Click Home tab and from the font group of buttons, click Bold, Italic or Underline button. The respective font style will be applied. There are options of applying different underline styles like a single underline, a double underline below the cell content. For this, click the arrow next to underline button and then select underline or double underline from the drop down list. Be quick. Press Ctrl plus B for bold, Ctrl plus I for italic and Ctrl plus U for underline. Number formatting. When we enter a number in a cell, by default it appears as a general number. However, there are some features available in MS Excel that allow you to format the numbers as per your requirement. You can place a currency sign before a number, place commas to separate long numbers, put percentage sign, specify the number of decimal places to be displayed, and much more. The number group provides you with all the features. The number group of buttons is in the Home tab. The features buttons available in the number groups of buttons are as follows. Number Format Clicking on this button gives a drop-down list box that helps you to choose how the values in the cell are to be displayed as percentage, as fraction, as currency, as date and time, etc. Select a cell containing a number, say 56492 as shown in the figure. Click number from the list box. You will see that two decimal places are added to the number. Click accounting from the list box. A currency symbol is added to the number. Right click the selected cell to get the accounting number format button. You can choose currencies by clicking on the arrow next to this button. Click percentage button and the number is shown in percentage. Click comma button. You will see that comma separates the thousands in the number. Click on increase decimal button to increase the number of decimal places and decrease decimal button to decrease the number of decimal places. Date and time formatting. You can also format the date and time as per your requirement. Select the cell having date or time content. Click the arrow next to number format and choose either of the date options, short date or long date. If you want to format the time in hours, minutes, seconds format, click the time option. Border formatting. You can apply a border around a cell or a range of cells to highlight that part of the worksheet. To apply borders in a worksheet, follow the steps given below. Create the table as shown in figure and then select the entire table. Click the Home tab. In the font group of buttons, click the arrow next to the border button. A borders drop-down menu appears. It has various border options to apply from, like bottom border, top border, all borders, and so on. To apply borders to the entire table, click all borders. The table borders are drawn. To further customize your borders, click more borders from the drop-down menu. The format cells dialog box appears. Click the border tab. You can select the desired border line style and border color as per your requirement. You can even choose any of the given present schemes as outline or inside. The format cells dialog box also gives you the option to select border outlines separately in the border area. After you have selected the desired option, click OK. The changes will be applied to the selected table. You can also draw borders for your table using the options available in MS Excel. This option is present in the Draw Border section of the Borders drop-down menu. To use Draw Border option, follow the steps given below. 
Select the line color and line style from the drop down menu and select the desired line color and line style from the various options that appear. Dotted line, broken line, single line, double line etc. Click draw border. The pointer will change to a pencil. You can now add outside border for the given table. Click draw border grid to draw borders around every cell in the table. The pointer will change to a pencil with a small square next to it. The draw border tool will draw borders around the boundary of the selected cell or a range of cells. The draw border grid tool will draw borders around every cell in your selection. To get a border around a particular cell, click on the boundary of that cell. To add borders for a range of cells, click and drag the mouse pointer to select the cells. Info Byte To remove the applied border, select No Border from the Borders drop-down menu. Color Formatting You can also change the background color of the cell or a range of cells. You can follow these steps to do so. Select the cells or range of cells. In the Home tab, click the arrow next to Fill Color in the Font group of buttons. The color palette appears. Choose the color. It will appear as the background of the selected cell. Cell Styles MS Excel also provides you with a number of pre-formatted style of cells. You can choose any of these styles. Select the cell or range of cells on which you want to apply the style. Click Home tab. From the Styles group of buttons, click the Cell Styles button. The cell styling pattern is displayed. Click the desired pattern and it will be applied on the selected cells. Starting QBasic. To start QBasic, run the executable file qbasic.exe from the QBasic folder. The QBasic welcome screen appears as shown below. Press Escape to hide the welcome screen and reveal the QBasic window as shown in the given figure. Components of the QBasic window Title Bar It displays the name of the current program. Menu Bar It contains seven menu items File Edit View Search, Run, Debug and Options Status Bar It displays the current status of the program and the list of function keys used for executing certain commands. The current row and column number on which the cursor is positioned is also displayed on the status bar. In case of any error, the interpreter displays the error and then stops the program. After the error is removed, the program execution starts again. Be quick. Press Alt plus Enter to maximize or minimize the QBasic window. QBasic menu commands. Let's know about some frequently used menus and commands available in QBasic. File menu commands. The commands of the file menu are as follows. New. This option is selected to open a new blank file with the name untitled. Open. This option loads or opens an already existing file. When you select the open option, an open dialog box appears. Select the program file that you want to open from the displayed options and then press the enter key. Save. It saves the current program file. Save as, it saves the current program file with a file name. On selecting this option, the Save As dialog box appears. Type the primary name of the file. Remember that it should not exceed 8 characters. QBasic program files are saved with an extension .bas. Print. It prints the current program file. Exit. It closes the QBasic window. Be quick. To open file menu, press Alt plus F. Press the highlighted character of each menu option to carry out the respective task. Run menu commands. 
The run menu contains commands to begin the program. It allows you to see the output of the program. To run the program, choose Start from the run menu. If you pause the program execution, choose Restart to start from the beginning and continue to start from that point itself. Be quick! To run a program from the beginning, press Shift plus F5. Press F5 to run the program which has been paused. InfoByte In IDE, you can change the background screen color of the interface while writing the programs. However, the color of the output screen always remains black. Elements of QBasic A computer language has certain basic elements that a user should know to work with that programming language. Given below are the basic elements of QBasic programming language. Character set, constants, variables, keywords, operators. Character set. The QBasic character set includes the following. Alphabetic letters, A to Z in capitals, A to Z in small letters. Numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Special characters, plus, minus, asterisk, slash, less than, greater than, is equal to, closed brackets, dot, semicolons, colons, inverted commas, dollar sign, exclamation mark, percentage sign, question mark, blank space, etc. Constants. A constant is a data value that does not change during the execution of the program. QBasic has two types of constants. Numeric constants. Numeric constants are positive or negative numbers with or without decimal points. For example, 7, 15.9, minus 25, minus 8.9, etc. are numeric constants. String constants. String constants or alphanumeric constants are a sequence of alphabetic letters, digits, characters such as hash and percentage enclosed in double quotes. For example, Aman 21 in double quotes, comma, 5346 New York in double quotes, comma, 108 Himgiri in double quotes, etc. are string constants. Rules for writing constants do not use comma while writing numeric constants. Always use negative sign to represent negative numbers. Variables A variable is a location in the memory that can be used to store a value. The value stored in the variable can be changed during the program execution. You can use the value stored inside a variable by referring to its variable name. Variables can be of two types. Numeric variable. A numeric variable stores a number that can be used for arithmetic calculations. Names of numeric variables can end with hash, percentage and or exclamation mark. String variable. A string variable can store alphabetic letters, digits and special characters. The names of string variables must end with a dollar sign. Rules for writing variables. A variable name should always begin with an alphabetic letter and more than one letter can also be used. No special characters are allowed in numeric variables. A number can be used followed by a letter of alphabet. For example, A2, BC46, FG92M, etc. The name of an alphanumeric variable should end with a dollar sign. A variable can be a maximum of 40 characters. Keywords Keywords are the reserved words used by QBasic. For example, print, rem, input etc. are keywords and they cannot be used as variable names while writing a program. Operators Operators are used to perform actions on variables and constants, thereby producing the desired result. QBasic has four types of operators. These are arithmetic, relational, 
logical and string operators arithmetic operators arithmetic operators are used with numeric variables and constants these operators perform mathematical calculations such as addition subtraction multiplication division and exponentiation the table on the next page gives a list of arithmetic operators with examples operation operator example result addition plus 15 plus 12 27 subtraction minus 28 minus 10 18 multiplication asterisk 3 asterisk 3 9 division forward slash 12 by 5 2.4 integer division backward slash 15 by 4 3 exponent power above arrow 2 exponent 4 16 modulus remainder mod 15 mod 4 3 relational operators relational operators are used to compare two values of the same type the result of the comparison is either true or false the table given below where a is equal to 25 b is equal to 15 shows the results with various relational operators relational operators meaning example result equal to a is equal to b false less than a is less than b false greater than a is greater than b true less than or equal to a is less than or equal to b false greater than or equal to a is greater than or equal to b true not equal to a is not equal to b true logical operators logical operators give true or false as a result they are used to combine two or more relational expressions the three logical operators used in q basic are and or and not The following table explains the three logical operators taking a is equal to 25 b is equal to 15 and c is equal to 10 logical operators meaning example result and returns true if both the expressions are true if a is greater than b and b is greater than c true A is greater than B and C is greater than B. False. Or returns true if either of the expressions is true. A is greater than B or B is greater than C. True. A is less than B or B is greater than C. A is greater than B or C is greater than B. True. Not. Returns true if the expression is false or vice versa. not a is greater than b false not a is greater than c false expressions an expression is a combination of constants variables and operators the result of an expression can be a numeric string or logical value the result of an expression can be stored in a variable for example a is equal to b plus c minus 5 precedence of operators the order in which the operators are executed in any q basic expression is termed as precedence in any expression the operators are executed from left to right as per the precedence the precedence of arithmetic relational and logical operators is given below arithmetic operators logical operators relational operators bracket not equal to exponent and greater than division or less than multiplication not equal to addition less than or equal to subtraction greater than or equal to q basic statements the instructions we give to the computer in q basic are called statements 
each statement has to be written according to the programming rules of the language. The particular way in which an instruction must be written is known as syntax of the language. Let's see how to write source statements in QBasic. Print statement. The print statement is used to display numbers, messages or values of variables on the output screen. Syntax, print data. For example, print 25, it will display 25 on the screen. Remember, no quotation marks are given to a numeric value. To display strings, we should enclose the characters in double quotes. For example, print QBasic is for beginners in double quotes. It will give the output as shown in the output screen. Print command with comma and semicolon. To print two or more values in one line, you should put either a comma or a semicolon. When you use a comma, the next value is displayed after a few spaces. When you use a semicolon, the next value is displayed after a single space for numeric data or without any space for strings. Consider the following examples. Print mathematics in double quotes 92. Output mathematics 92, multiple spaces between mathematics and 92. Print signs in double quotes semicolon 86. Output Signs 86, single space between signs and 86. Print total semicolon marks in double quotes. Output total marks, no space between total and marks. The print command without any data or variable will leave a blank line on the screen. Calculations with print command. Print command can also be used for printing the result of simple calculations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The respective arithmetic operators are used to complete the operation. For example, print 92 plus 86 will give the output 178. Print total is equal to, in double quotes, 92 plus 86 will give the output Total is equal to 178. You can also use variables with print command. For example, x is the variable containing the value 178. If you give the command print x, you will get the output as shown in the screen. You can also use a question mark instead of print. That means both the commands given below give the same output. Print, I like QBasic. Or, question mark, I like QBasic in double quotes. Let statement. The let statement is used to assign a value to any variable. So it is also known as assignment statement. Syntax. Let variable name equal to value to be assigned. If we want to assign a numeric value to a variable a, then the statement will be let a is equal to 25. Print a. The output of the above code is shown in the screen. To assign an alphanumeric value to a string variable, the statement will be as follows. Let subject dollar sign is equal to signs. However, the use of the word let is optional and the above statements can also be written as A is equal to 25 subject dollar sign is equal to signs. CLS statement. The CLS statement is used to clear the screen. This statement is written in the beginning of a program so that the output of the previous program is not shown on the screen. REM statement. The REM statement is used to write comments or remarks in the program. Anything after the REM command up to the end of the line is ignored by QBasic. The comments are not visible during the execution of the program. Hence, comments do not affect the output of the program. A programmer can mention what the program is all about. Syntax REM command 
For example, rem a program to understand rem statement. Print rem statement is not visible on the screen. The comments can also be placed at the end of any other Q basic statement, but for that you should precede the command with an apostrophe. For example, print A, here A is the sum of B and C. Input statement. The input statement is used to take a value from the user and store it in a variable. When the program expects an input from the user, a question mark appears on the screen. The data that the user enters is stored in the variable used with the input command. Syntax Input Variable For example, print enter your name. Input name dollar sign Print your name is in double quotes semicolon name dollar sign. The output of the above code is shown in the given screen. When the above program is executed, a question mark is displayed on the output screen. The program waits for the user to type the input value. The user types the name and presses the enter key. This will assign the value to a variable. It is only after you press the enter key, the control moves to the next program statement. In the example given above, the print and input statements can be combined into a single statement. Print, enter your name in double quotes, semicolons. Input, name, dollar sign. Can also be written as, input, enter your name in double quotes, semicolon, name, dollar sign. If then, in this statement, the control flows according to a given condition. If the given condition is true, then the statements in the if block are executed. If it is not true, the commands in the if block are skipped and the next program statement is executed. Syntax if condition then statement s and if. Consider the following program code. REM a program to give remarks on the marks obtained. CLS print enter your marks. Input marks if marks are greater than or equal to 90 then print you have done very well in double quotes and if. However, this program has a drawback. If the marks are less than 90 no output will be displayed. To overcome this drawback, you can make use of the if-then-else statement. If-then-else If you want your program to give some output even if the condition is false, then if-then-else statement is used. Syntax If condition then Statements A Else Statements B And if in this case, statements A will be executed if the condition is true and statements B will be executed if the condition is false. Consider the next piece of code. REM, a program to understand if, then, else statement. CLS, print, enter your marks. Input marks, if marks are greater than or equal to 90, then, print, you have done well. Else, Print, work hard, and if. If, then, else if. Else if keyword is used when we want to check multiple conditions in if, then, else statement. Syntax. If condition 1, then statements 1. Else if condition 2, then statements 2. Else if condition 3. Then, statements 3, else, alternative statements, and if. Consider the following example to print the division of a student based on the percentage of marks scored. CLS, input, enter marks in percentage in double quotes, semicolon, marks percentage sign. If marks percentage sign is greater than or equal to 60, then, Print first division. Else if marks percentage are more than equal to 50, then print second division in double quotes. Else if marks percentage are more than or equal to 40, then print third division. Else print fail. And if 
end. Select case. This is yet another type of conditional statement that is used when we have multiple conditions. Syntax select case expression of value. Case value 1 statements A. Case value 2 statements B. Case else statements N. And select. Consider the example to display the days of the week based on the number of day and third. CLS input enter the day number in double quotes semicolon day number. Select case day number, case 1, print Monday, case 2, print Tuesday, case 3, print Wednesday in double quotes, case 4, print Thursday in double quotes, case 5, print Friday, case 6, print Saturday in double quotes, case 7, print Sunday in double quotes, case else, print wrong input and select end the above program takes the day number 1 to 7 as input and prints the corresponding day of the week if the user enters any number other than 1 to 7 then the message wrong input is displayed on the screen computer networks a computer network is referred to as a collection of two or more computers linked together for sharing information and resources. These interconnected computers work independently. This means that no computer interferes with the working of the other computer in the network. Each computer on the network is called a node. These nodes may be connected to each other through wires. At times, the connection between the computers can be wireless. A network can further get connected with other networks or contain sub-networks. In this manner, we can make larger networks. In the given picture, you can see that there are many independent computers connected with each other through wires. But there is only one printer in the network. It means print command can be given from any of the computers. Besides this, users can exchange files with one another. Types of networks There can be just two computers or thousands of computers in a network. Computers in a network can be installed at one place or spread all across the world. Hence, network may vary in terms of their size. Let's study about different types of computer networks. Personal Area Network PAN Personal Area Network PAN is a computer network that is used by a single person. It covers an area of just a few meters. It involves a mobile computer, a mobile phone, a camera, an audio player, etc. A PAN can be used to transfer files including emails, calendar appointments, digital pictures or audio-video files from one device to another. For example, if you want to transfer your photographs from your mobile phone to your computer, then the mobile phone and the computer form a PAN. Local Area Network LAN in a local area network LAN, the network devices are connected in a closed geographical area, such as a floor of a building or an entire building or a campus. LANs are small networks and link just a few computers. But LANs can often be extended to link hundreds of computers. Many users can share expensive devices like laser printers as well as data on a LAN. Generally, the computers in LAN are physically connected to each other through wires, but nowadays, we also have wireless LAN that uses Wi-Fi technology to communicate on the network. InfoByte Wi-Fi is the name of a popular wireless networking technology that uses radio waves to provide high-speed network communication. Metropolitan Area Network MAN a metropolitan area network MAN is bigger than a LAN. It covers a larger area than a LAN. Approximately, it covers a range of 5 to 50 kilometers. So, it usually covers a number of buildings in a metropolitan city. 
For example, in a city, all branches of an educational institute may be forming a man. Mans are characterized by very high speed connections. Wide area network van. Wide area network van spans a large geographical area like a country or a continent. A van combines multiple land that are spread across the globe. The worldwide network of banks is an example of van. That is how we can withdraw and deposit money through any of the ATM machines across the world. Infobyte The internet is the largest WAN across the globe. Advantages of networking There are many advantages of networking. Users on a network can share files and information with each other. For example, different departments of an organization may be located at distant places. Still, their data could be stored on a central computer, which can be accessed by computers located in the different departments. Software and hardware resources such as printers, scanners, hard disks, etc. can also be shared. This reduces the cost of buying these resources. Hardware failure of any computer on a network does not affect working of other computers in the network. Hence, networks are more reliable than a single computer. A computer network is a powerful, fast and reliable medium of communication for its users. Using a network makes it easy for two or more people in different parts of the world to stay connected with each other. In fact, the best example in this context is the Internet. With the help of the internet, we can communicate efficiently and easily via email, instant messaging, chat rooms, telephone, video telephone calls and video conferencing. Internet Internet or international network is a network of networks spread across the globe, all of which are connected to each other. This super network is also seen as an advanced form of WAN in many respects. It connects many smaller networks together and allows all the computers to exchange information with each other. The internet was initially restricted to military and academic institutions, but now it is a channel for all forms of information. Working of Internet Internet is a global network of computers. These different types of computers, having different operating systems, are able to communicate with one another through a common set of rules. These rules are called protocols. Some commonly used protocols are given on the next page. Transmission Control Protocol TCP Internet Protocol IP The two protocols together are known as TCP or IP protocol. The data is transmitted from one computer to another in the following manner. At the source computer from where the data is to be transferred, the data or messages or files is broken down into small packets. Each packet has a serial number and an address called Internet Protocol Address, IP address on it. Each computer connected to the Internet has a unique IP address. All these packets are then sent to the address of the destination computer one by one. They are passed from one computer to another until they reach their destination. The destination computer receives the packets in random order. The TCP arranges the packets in order of their serial number. Thus, the original data is obtained. If any packet is lost during the transmission, it is demanded again. Uses of Internet Internet has become an ocean of information. One can search for any topic on the Internet. Emails, video conferencing, chat, social networking sites are some of the features for communication. Video conferencing is used by companies to collaborate and work from locations that are geographically apart. Internet is being largely used for selling and buying products online. Internet is used for entertainment purposes such as playing online games, watching movies, listening to songs, etc. Educational institutions offer online courses in which the classes are conducted over the Internet. 
The internet is used by people to pay bills, operate bank accounts and book tickets. Infobite In 1969, the U.S. Department of Defense set up a network called ARPANET, Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. Initially, the network consisted of just four computers. Gradually, its size grew bigger and bigger. Internet Service Providers To avail the facility of Internet, you need a connection from an ISP, Internet Service Provider. An ISP is a company that provides internet service to its customers. An ISP may provide different types of internet connections such as cable internet connection, digital subscribed line, DSL connection, satellite connection, wireless connection. Apart from a computer system, the main hardware part required is modem which is provided by the company. When you register with an ISP for its services, an account is created and you are provided with a login detail, username and password. You connect to the internet by means of your account and this way the company keeps a track of your internet usage. An ISP may charge a monthly or an annual fee for its services. Some popular ISPs in India are BSNL, Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited, Tata Indicom, Airtel and Vodafone. Logos of some popular ISPs in India World Wide Web www. The World Wide Web, commonly known as the Web, is a collection of interconnected pages. The various pages are connected using links. www is based on client-server architecture. The web server stores the web pages. The client, which is a web browser, accesses the pages on the web server using a set of rules or protocol called the HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Infobyte On 30 April 1993, the access to www technology was made free for everybody. Web browser makes a request for a web page using rules of hypertext transfer protocol. Web server sends the web page using rules of hypertext transfer protocol. Now let us discuss the few terms related to the www. Web server A web server is a computer that stores the web pages and processes the requests made by the clients. When a web server receives a request from a client, it locates the document and sends it back to the web client. Web Browser A web browser is a software that lets you access and navigate the World Wide Web. There are various types of web browsers. Some of the commonly used web browsers are Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome and Opera. Website A website is a collection of related pages linked to one another. Home page is the first page of a website. It gets displayed in the browser window when a website is opened. It usually contains links to other sections or pages of the website. Web page The pages that make up the World Wide Web are known as web pages. A web page is created using a language called Hypertext Markup Language or HTML. The pages may contain text, images, audio, videos and links to other web pages called hyperlinks. When you click a hyperlink, it displays the concerned link. Infobyte Tim Berners-Lee is known as the father of the World Wide Web. URL Uniform Resource Locator The unique address of a website or a web page is known as URL. Examples of URLs are http colon slash slash www.yahoo.com http colon slash slash google.com to access a web page, you type the URL of the website or any other web page on the address bar of the browser window. 
A URL is made up of three parts. The first part of the address is the protocol being used. The second part of the address is the name of the server which has the resource or page to be accessed. The third part of the address is the complete path of the file on the server communicating through the internet. Internet has almost revolutionized the communication system of the world. It is due to the internet that we can communicate to anyone sitting in any corner of the earth. Internet provides us with different modes of communication. We can even communicate face to face using internet. Internet provides a very effective, fast and reliable means of communication. In class 5, you have already studied about the most rapidly adopted form of communication, electronic mail or email. In this chapter, you will study about some other popular forms of communication. Text-based communication, verbal communication, face-to-face -face communication. Instant messaging. You must have heard the phrase chatting on the internet. It is a way of sending and receiving short text-based messages rapidly. Instant messaging, IM, is a web service that allows people to communicate through text messaging. To chat through IM, you might have to download a messenger program from your browser. A list of people that you want to interact with is stored by this messenger service and is displayed on the browser. The IM system alerts you when somebody on your private chat list is online or has sent you a message. You can start chatting with that person. For this, you type messages to each other in a small window that is visible to both the sender and the receiver. This window is known as a chat window. Some of the common instant messaging services are provided by American Online, AOL, Instant Messenger, Skype, Yahoo Messenger, and Google Talk. Advanced forms of instant messaging have the following enhanced features. Web links, sharing hyperlinks to your favorite websites. Video, sending and viewing videos, chatting face-to-face -face with friends. You need a webcam to use this feature. Images, sharing and viewing the image stored on your friend's computer. Sounds, playing audio for your friends. Files, sending files as attachments directly to your friends. Talk, using the internet instead of phone to actually talk with your friends. Skype, news and updates, sharing real-time news and updates. Mobile capabilities, sending instant messages from your mobile phone. Chat rooms. Chat rooms are groups of people online who are categorized according to their common interests. People in chat rooms may or may not be known to each other. The chat may be text-based, voice-based or video-based. Through chat rooms, the participants can have live discussions with one another. Text is instantly displayed in the chat room's conversation log or chat window after a user clicks the enter or send button. Other users included in the chat session are able to see what another user types. But at any time, you can decide to leave the chat room or even have a private chat with any one person in the chat room. Chat rooms are used by employees of various organizations to communicate with each other from multiple locations. Many websites offer chat room facilities. Some of the popular chat websites are allindiachat.com, paltalk.com, teenchat.com, openchat, etc. Nowadays, messenger services like Yahoo Messenger, Google Talk, Skype Online Chat can be used for both instant messaging and chatting through chat rooms. We should be very careful while chatting on the internet. Given below are some important tips to be followed at the time of chatting. Before joining a chat service, carefully read its terms and conditions, especially privacy policy. 
Use decent language while chatting. Do not reveal your contact number, address or any other personal information in a chat room. Do not make friends with strangers through online chatting and never try to meet them in private. Inform your parents if anybody is sending you offensive messages. InfoBite The first online chat system was Talkomatic. It was created by Doug Brown and David R. Woolley in 1974. Blogs The term blog was first coined by Peter Merholz in 1999. He coined this term using the words weblog. A blog is actually a website that contains an online personal journal. So a blog allows the users to share their thoughts and ideas. Individual articles on a blog are called blog posts. Authoring or editing a blog is called blogging. It is an easy way to create a website in which articles are posted regularly. In fact, anybody who knows how to create and publish a web page can publish his or her own blog. You need to type the text that you want to post and click on the publish button. Your blog will be posted. Microblogging is a type of blogging in which very short messages are posted. Twitter is mostly used for microblogging. Users on Twitter are allowed to send and receive text messages which are restricted up to 140 characters. These messages are known as tweets. Antivirus Software An antivirus is a utility software which detects, prevents and removes computer viruses, worms and Trojan horses. If the antivirus software is not able to remove the virus, it makes the virus inactive. If a virus is found, the antivirus program either alerts the user and highlights the infected program or kills the virus. Some antivirus softwares are available free of cost, while some have to be bought. Some common antivirus programs are Norton Antivirus, McAfee Virus Scan, AVG, Kaspersky and QuickHeal. All antivirus programs have almost the same method of installation, scanning and updation. Now, we will discuss Microsoft Security Essentials MSE in detail. Installation of Microsoft Security Essentials Most of the antivirus software are bought. However, some antivirus software can be downloaded from the Internet. The steps for installing antivirus software are given below. Log on to the Microsoft Security Essentials page www.microsoft.com slash security slash PC security slash MSE dot ASPX and download the software. The home page gives a detailed description about MSE and its interface. Click on the Download Now button. After the downloading is completed, double-click the MSC install icon to begin the installation process. The installation is generally self-explanatory. Just follow the instructions that appear on the screen. Also click on the checkbox to turn on the Windows firewall when asked to. When it is done, it will ask you to run a scan. Click on Yes and it will download the latest virus definitions and run its first scan. Scanning of Viruses Once the Microsoft Security Essentials is installed, it starts running in the background and constantly monitors the system for any virus. MSC has a Clean Home tab that also depicts the status of your computer. In the given picture, the green icon means that the security status of your computer is good. The home page of Microsoft Security Essentials would change if it detects any virus in the system. The status pane will turn either yellow or red, depending upon the type of issue the antivirus software has detected. After that, the action button appears in a prominent location on the page with the suggested action. As you can see in the figure, a yellow icon is displayed. It means that your computer is unprotected and that some action should be taken such as turning on real-time protection 
or running a system scan. A red icon means that your computer is at risk and that an immediate action is required to protect it. Click the button to take the recommended action and Microsoft Security Essentials will clean the detected file and then do a quick scan for additional malware. To get your system scanned according to a schedule, click on the setting tab. The scan will then run on the scheduled time. Make sure that your computer is switched on at the time scanning has been scheduled. Updating Virus Definitions Regular updation of an antivirus software is essential to ensure complete protection from the viruses. One should keep on updating the computer with the latest version of an antivirus program. When we run the antivirus software, it scans for a database of viruses. We call this database virus definitions. New viruses are being created every now and then. So, updation of the antivirus is essential. Only then antivirus software will be able to detect new viruses. Usually, the installed antivirus software flashes messages if the trial period of the software is about to expire or if the software is due for an update. The software also gives a warning message if the computer is not sufficiently protected from malware. If any of the above message flashes, antivirus software will have to be updated. We will now learn how to update the MSC antivirus software. Click on Update tab on the MSC page. The updation process begins as shown in the figure given. After the updation is completed successfully, a message, Virus and Spyware definitions are up to date, appears on the screen.